Riding a sled takes muscles, unless you've got technique. But technique is hard. It's easier to build meat than learn how to ride. So I'm going to show you five exercises you can do right now to make your meat massive without moving any metal. No special equipment required. These are the tricks that gyms don't want you to know. Remember, if you go to a gym, you must be dim. I'm going to go quickly, so listen up. Number one, a standard push-up. This is the go-to exercise for the bilateral booble condyles with some recruitment of the pecker bone if you're training with a special friend. This exercise is strenuous, frankly a bit degrading, so I wouldn't normally do more than one per season, or just do the down and not the up. Number two is the easy peasy, a traditional exercise from the Pacific Islands. Everyone's got a PZ in the backyard. This one mainly works the Castercheosis maximus and the Saxton Kaidiyama hop over us. Heavier the better. If you're super strong, try it on a Yamaha four stroke. Overall though, this exercise takes far too much effort and I don't recommend it. Number three, dropping a log. It's a variation on something most of you do every morning. This one's gonna focus on your medial pucker ring. And let's face it, every rider's gonna use that muscle when they're terrified above a cliff band. But the problem with this exercise is straining. So I wouldn't include it in your program. Just drop it. Number four is actually a series of playground exercises. It's all about using common household items to make some major meat. The mini bike, the twin scooter, the unicycle, the wibbly wobbly thingy in the wheelchair. Gyms don't want you to know about these exercises. And anyway, if you go to a gym, you must be dim. But if you're serious about maximizing your meat, and who isn't, then these exercises are gonna pump up your adductor longus, your post-mortem analysis, and your levator labii superioris at aliqua nasi way harder than any meathead gym workout but unfortunately all these muscles are evolutionary dead ends that won't help you at all on a snowmobile so i can't recommend any of them number five's too rude i can't tell you about that number six is right on mowing and actually the only one i can wholeheartedly recommend the main functions you're going to call on here are bipedally vestibular and respiratory which are just fancy anatomical words for standing and breathing standing and breathing are core skills you're going to need pretty much every day on your snowmobile, so this really is the one weird trick that I recommend you base your whole training program on. Standing and breathing. Gyms don't want you to know about this trick because they're funded by Big Jim.